Testing, testing, this, this is on. Praise the Lord. I said praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Because he is so worthy to be praised. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be exceedingly glad in it. This is Woman's Day. And we're here to praise the Lord and give him all the praise, honor, and the glory. So would you stand with me? As we go into our call of worship, but before I sit down, I need to introduce our mistress of ceremony, Dr. Rhea MacIver Gibbs. Let's give her a hand. This is the day that the Lord hath made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Let the people that walk upon the land proclaim that Jesus Christ is King of kings and Lord of all. He is Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. Our God is an awesome God, and he's worthy, so worthy to be praised. Now, I don't know what you've come to do, but I've come to praise his name. And if you've been through my June and July, you would understand why I am so excited to be standing here in front of you. So now this is Women's Day, and 25 years ago, we were in purple. And I was co-chair then with Arlene Boston. And then after that, I became chair for two years and on the committee for many years. So the time and effort that is put into this day is a lot. So you can participate and show your appreciation women of worship choir that will procession in because it's women's day okay we walk in on women's day we have planned these outfits for weeks and the Lord is happy to see us so let us receive our choir
Amen. We've come to praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Let's give God some great praise in the house for allowing us to be here. Amen. To offer up this praise. So we just want to praise you forever and ever.
bless the Lord, oh my soul. But this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. I was glad when they said, let us come into the house of the Lord. Amen. Bless the name of the Lord, for God is great and greatly to be praised. Let's not stop celebrating Jesus on today. You may be seated. As you see, we've come to give him high praise today. So if you didn't come in the building on fire, you better catch it. Service is not a spectator sport. This is participatory. So we are celebrating being women of God today. That is special. I am so grateful God made me a woman and a black woman. That's a double blessing. So today, we are not going to tiptoe around this service. You see, the choir has come to sing, and we want you to be just as inspired. So as we follow the order of service, we will now have our scripture by Sister Biage Sharp and our prayer by Sister Paula Harris then followed by a selection from the choir and our Sunday School Review by Brother Thrash. Come in that order, thank you. Announcements first, video announcements. So look to the screen and then followed in that order. Good morning, New Hope family and friends, sharing in our ministry across the nation. Our doors open at 9 a.m. and the worship service begins at 9.30 a.m. We are located at 1575 West 17th Street in the city of San Bernardino. We are a congregation of spirit-filled individuals who worship their creator and spread his good news. Our services are live streamed and available for viewing on our church website and social media platforms, YouTube and Facebook. This is Carolyn Jordan Daniels and these are your announcements for the week of July 16, 2023. Deacons available to assist you this week are Deacon Bobby Magby II and Deacon Wade Young. Okay, New Hope, get here a little earlier and be blessed by attending Sunday School in person or on Zoom. Classes are online Sunday mornings from 8 a.m. to 8.45 a.m. Consult our church website for the connection information to the class of your choice. There is an in-person mixed adults class held in the chapel from 8.30 a.m. to 9.15 a.m. All are welcome to attend. Hope is Alive is an additional opportunity to worship with New Hope by way of internet radio. Tune in at 11 a.m. for the best in gospel music on Gospel Explosion. Then at noon, Hope is Alive will feature a gospel message as well as an informal interview with Dr. Michael Andrew Owens and other special guests. There are various ways to connect to the radio broadcast. You can go to the website www.studiowbuzz or studiow.buzz Go to your Apple store and download studio.w or your Android store and download studio.w. The broadcast is also available on Alexa, Apple CarPlay, and Google Play. Attention all Bible scholars and prayer warriors. Prayer meeting and Wednesdays in the Word Bible study at noon is in person in the Dr. David Campbell Fellowship Hall and on Zoom. The connection information is in the church bulletin. Good morning, New Hope. The New Hope Media team is actively looking for volunteers in support of audio, website management, and graphic design. If you have a skill set in these areas or interested in learning, please join us. Our meetings will be held every first Monday of the month at 7 p.m. We look forward to you joining our team. New Hope is accepting applications for church custodian. Applications are available at the church office window Monday through Friday from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. Attention all church administrators, employees, and volunteers. If you are 18 years of age and older and supervising minors, please contact Trustee Kennard Moffitt to schedule your live scan. You are required to have a valid government ID and phone number. 
If you like to fish, please grab your fishing attire and pole and join the layman on Saturday, July 22nd for an excursion to the Fishing Men's Retreat in Redlands, California. Please contact Brother Charles Berryhill, coordinator, at 840-234-7676. See y'all at the Crawdad Fishing Hole. The Quarterly Church Business Meeting has been scheduled for Wednesday, July 26th at 7 p.m. Be a good steward of God's blessings and remember to give your tithes and offerings in one of several ways. Online, give on our website or mobile app, utilize Pushpay, you can text to give, mail your church contributions, or come to the church office during office hours Monday through Friday from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. Tithes and offerings will also be received at the conclusion of our in-person worship service today. Our sympathy and Christian concern are extended to the following families. To Deaconess Ann Booker, Sister Demetria James, and family in the loss of their nephew and cousin, Danny Bullock. The memorial service was held on Thursday, July 13th in Corona, California. To Sister Teresa Daniels, Brother Robert and Carolyn Daniels, and family in the loss of their son and cousin, Jason Hogan. The memorial service will be held on Wednesday, July 19th at 11 a.m. at First AME Church in Los Angeles, California. To Deacon Rodney Harris, Sister Aaron Stein, and family in the loss of their wife and mother, Deaconess Lorraine Harris. The homegoing service will be held at 10 a.m. on July 27th at New Hope Missionary Baptist Church. New Hope, God loves to hear your voice. Please use it to pray for those on the sick and shut in list, the prayer list, and our bereaved families. Also, send a card and or make a telephone call to let them know how much we care. Just to name a few, Captain Joshua Jackson, Sister Freddie Hollis, Sister Loretta Nesbitt Jackson, and Brother Roy Osborne. Your thought for the week is, this is going to be a God made away kind of week. May your week be thankful, grateful, and truly blessed. Good morning, New Hope. My name, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> My name is Brianna Sharp, and I'll be reading Colossians chapter 3, verse 23 and 24, King James Version. Oh, yeah. And whatsoever ye do, do it heartily, as to the Lord and not unto men, knowing that of the Lord ye shall receive the reward of the inheritance. For ye serve the Lord Christ. May God add a blessing to the readers, hearers, and doers of his holy word. Amen. Good morning, New Hope. You can be seated now. I'm going to say the prayer. Father God, I want to thank you for waking us up this morning so that we can see another beautiful day that you have made for us and let us live in it. I would like to thank you also for bringing the young woman in Alabama back home safe to her family, that they were able to find her, and that they will you will bless her. Bless the people that are here, that are sick, that are suffering in the hospital, that you will be with them. Help us to deal with this heat out here, that we could be comforted with cool air and everything will be okay. Protect the ones that are traveling now during the holidays, the summertime, that they can make a safe journey to and back home from where they're going. Um, God bless me and my family so that everything will be fine with the things that we are going through. I ask this in Jesus' name I pray, amen.
Worship experience this morning with the ladies. Let's give them a hand clap. I'm here to do the Sunday school review, and it's coming from Jeremiah chapter 29, verses 4 through 14. Uh, the book title is called Present. Um, I like to call it a letter from home. You know how we, some of us in the old days, uh, was in a service or college and we got that letter from home it encouraged us it, it lifted us up this letter that Jeremiah sent um, was meant to encourage those exiles that had went to Nebuchadnezzar Babylon so God instructed Jeremiah right after the second deportation of his people to write a letter to the remaining Jewish elders who had been carried away to Babylon by the king Nebuchadnezzar heathen king. This letter was written to com 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 comfort them while in exile. So now we see in our lesson, continue with Jeremiah, the study of Jeremiah, that God had executed this plan of punishment. After centuries of dealing with, with the stiff-necked people, he's had enough. He's had enough. He tried to get them to repent. 
but they would not listen. So now he has executed his plan to take the folks from their homeland to Babylon. In verses 4 to 10, Jeremiah writes of instruction to those Israelites that were in Babylon. Now, we can say that the reason for the instruction was to help them understand that they were not to act as slaves to the Babylonians, but to instead to act as colonists. So what did he instruct them to do first? In verse 5, he told them to build some houses and live in them, okay? Plant gardens and eat their fruit because they was going to be there for 70 years. Might as well get with the program, right? You're not going nowhere for 70 years, okay? Be productive, take care of themselves, and don't rely on the government for any public assistance. God wanted them to take wives and have children, increasing their population, such as they've done in Egypt. God did not want them to fade away or worse, to be diminished. So this particular instruction is going to result in some jubilation because you will have birthday parties, you will have some weddings, you will have a few other things that's going to be jubilation. In verse 7, God instructed them to seek peace in the city by praying to him. And then they will have peace. God instructed them not to be deceived by false prophets or diviners who were living in the city with them. Verse 9. You would think by now this was not necessary because of this is reason why they was, one of the reasons why they was there because they was listening to false prophets and not listening to Jeremiah. But we're going to see in a minute uh, there was a reason for this. Lastly, God told them that after 70 years he would visit them and perform his good works toward them and cause them to return to Jerusalem. Here again, we see God's mercy, his grace, and his restoration for his people being promised. And it was, it was done, if you read Ezra and Nehemiah. In verse 12 to 14, what we learn what God had planned, he also gave the people an opportunity to participate in by sincere prayer, sincere prayer. Don't go in there and pray not being sincere. Be sincere in your prayer life. And he will answer their prayers, verse 14, by returning the Jews to the land. This is for fulfillment, like I mentioned, occurred in the era of Ezra and Nehemiah. However, beyond this is an event full of, me full of measure that all his people will experience. And that is when Jesus come back a second time. Amazingly, and despite the promises that God mentioned in his message, the Jewish captives still disobeyed God and listened to the false prophets who lived among them. Verses 15, 19. That was not part of our lesson today, but as you read that, you'll see in 15, 19, they still listened to the false prophets. Stiff-necked people. Woo. Woo. And, and I guess we probably all we, we, we probably know some stiff-necked people. Don't look around. Don't, don't look around. Okay? Our application, even though our sin nature exists and is fighting against us consistently, God's plans and his promises for us believers will be fulfilled even if one must be judged because of sinfulness. His promises are his promises. They will not change. We change. And accordingly, he will make that adjustment on us if we have to, that attitude adjustment that mom and daddy used to have to do to us. So, so some of his promises have been partially fulfilled. But the great fulfillment is waiting for us when Christ returns. Remember that. Do not be stiff-necked people, disobedient people. God did not want to punish us. He wants us to be in proper fellowship with him all the time. Nevertheless, he is the righteous judge who demands that we only worship him and obey him and there will be perfect and sometimes necessary consequences for our failure to do so. Why would you want to be on the receiving end of God's wrath because you chose to disobey him? Lastly, 
as believers, no matter what situation you find yourself in, either by your own sinfulness, as the Jews find themselves in Jeremiah, or because of a testing that Job found himself, always remember that God is with you and he can change your circumstances as fast as you can blink your eyes. If you have faith, James 1, 5 to 6. Make sure you guys come to Sunday school. We got three, less, three classes of Sunday school. We got wonderful teachers. Make sure you guys come on and get, and get a word from, from, from God revealing his word to you. God bless. Amen. Thank you, Brother Thrash. The choir told us to trade our worry for worship and our problems for praise. And I think if we take nothing else, that is a word for the week. And so as they come, we are always so excited to see our young people on program. So we are going to be blessed by unspeakable praise, followed by our hospitality welcome by Sister Donna Thrash and our worship fellowship song.
Church. Let's see. Give an honor to God who controls every aspect of my life. To our pastor, Dr. Michael Andrew Owens, to associate ministers, officers, members, and friends. My name is Sister Donna Thrash, and I have the pleasure of welcoming you to our annual 2023 women's worship. Let's see. It is my joy to welcome you to, to New Hope's annual worship service. Thank you for choosing to fellowship with us and praising the glory of God. Visitors sharing in person today, please stand and remain standing. We pray that you are being blessed by the service today. If you are in need of a church home, please consider New Hope. We will have an opportunity during the invitation of discipleship to respond, coming forward to receive Jesus Christ and becoming part of a historical church that is still learning and growing and committed to serving God. If you are worshiping by way of one of our social media platforms, we are located at 1575 West 17th Street in San Bernardino, California. Our phone number is 909-887-2526. Please visit us on our website for vital information about how to connect with us for ongoing ministry opportunities. New Hope, this is our two-minute fellowship. You may cheerfully greet one another in the manner which you, which you are comfortable. Thank you so much, and enjoy this.
Encouraging each other is important. So look to a lady that's nearby you and tell them how good they look for the Lord today. Tell them that you are happy to see them. <laughs> Women's Day is always a highlight because this is the day we highlight that we are women. So I know that Aaliyah Sharp is going to give us a word of encouragement, and I'm going to encourage my sister. This is Dr. Aaliyah Sharp loading. Okay? Speak it, and it will be. Good morning. Thank you for that. Um, first, giving honor to God. Whew. Pastor to the women of worship who keep charging me with this responsibility. God bless you all. I am honored to be here today. I was reminded that a year ago, I stood here before you to speak, and I had spent the greater part of that night before in the hospital waiting for my... <laughs> waiting for news about my son. We didn't know what was going on with him. He had lost about 18 pounds in 12 days. As far as I was concerned, he was on his deathbed. He's my only child. And um, whew, when I think about <laughs> all he's done for me, my soul cries out hallelujah. Because this week I looked at that same child who was withering away before my eyes and, and, and called him Chunky <laughs> because God has done a miraculous thing in his life. So I am honored to stand here today again before you uh, to empower you, to encourage you. Um, I wrote this uh, in 2021 and I think that it is fitting for us today. It is called My Turn. <clears throat> my turn you ever ask yourself the question when is it going to be my turn or what is wrong with me 
Exactly. Girl, bye. Don't you dare cry over what is unknown and what was never promised to you in the first place. God said man should not be alone then. <laughs> Here comes Eve and that forbidden fruit that changed the course of a woman's plight forever. Some look at that act as a reason why women suffer, but I look at it as proof that women are truly designed to be the reason why men listen to what we say. They're responsible for her own destiny and how powerful her words and action can be in the life of her man. In spite of that, we are designed by God to be that voice that men listen to when the world around him gets to be too noisy. Our biggest decision is to decide what voice we will share. Will it be one that builds and uplifts or simply one of despair? Women, know you're worthy of your strength. Humans are so rarely satisfied. Singles want to mate. Married want to be single. Thin want to be thicker and thicker want to be thin. Short wish they were tall and the list goes on and on. Everyone's waiting for their turn, but the truth is your turn is now. Make every moment count and count every moment. My turn is every day that I wake up because that is another opportunity to be great and build greatness. I speak life into him, I speak life into me, I speak life into we, and the only death I speak of is the one that is inevitable for all of us. But until then, we have an eternity full of turns. So choose right until there's no other turns left. Thank you. Thank you, Aaliyah. So I understand we have a video presentation that's coming up next, followed by presentation of Hidden Figures by Deaconess Ann Booker and Deaconess Kay Walker. So video, please. I'm waiting. <laughs> okay, we're good to go. Sound? No sound? You gonna put a little track behind it? Okay, put a little track. Live or otherwise. Well, let's give them a hand. What the video was showing you are the activities that are planned leading up to Women's Day. There are many things that are done in preparation. The committee works hard. They put together fun activities. And I believe that was a paint um, party that happened. 
And I know my mom had a great time. She'd never done that before. And so, and I think her work of art, we're gonna hang it in the garage. <laughs> it'll, it'll be a nice, nice compliment. I know when I did that before, that's where mine is hanging. So now if we can have Deaconess K. Walker and Deaconess Ann Booker come forward with Hidden Figures presentation. Good morning, New Hope. Good morning. As Sister Re Dr. Rhea McIver Gibbs has said, I'm Deaconess Ann Booker. My co-partner today is none other than my friend, Deaconess Kay Walker. And we have the distinguished honor today to recognize some hidden treasures that are right amongst us. And so we want to start this morning with someone that's very near and dear to our hearts. She was born right here at New Hope, <laughs> commemorating our Women's Day 25 years ago. She was weighed in at little more than two pounds and seven <laughs> ounces. <laughs> All the doctors gave her up. But her mom and her grandmother being faithful members here, came to the women of New Hope and asked for prayer. And oh, I tell you, Dr. Owens, it's something about when women pray. Ha, God said hi, but he looks low. And when the doctors gave this young lady up, ha, God said no. So today, we want to recognize her. She's very active in our children's church. She sang in the children's choir. She was a member. I'm trying to skip over this so she don't know exactly who she is. Uh, Girl Scout Troop number 252. Uh, she weaved her way through adulthood. She keeps the word of the Lord close to her. She often wears a graphic tee, now this is gonna give it away, that says, <laughs> I'm so fresh. <laughs> And then one that says, I was born twice. She has many interests and talents, such as drawing, the love of music, and reading. She's also learning Spanish and other, and she also dabbles in a bit of sign language. She loves everybody and works well with children and the elderly. Thank God, baby, I'm one. <laughs> she has a heart of gold and is a living witness representing God's miracle working power and the prayer of women. This young lady today, none other than Briagi Simone Mary Sharp. Let's honor her today. <laughs> morning again and I am here to recognize the second hidden figure. Her children rise up and call her blessed. Her husband also and he praises her. Proverbs 31 28. Charm is deceitful and beauty is vain but a woman who fears the Lord she shall be praised. We are honoring this woman of God for her beautiful inner heart that she always showed. She is a wife, a mother, a grandmother, and a sister whose almost characters precede her along with her love for others. Nevertheless, she never has forgotten her roots that began with her love for God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Her love for her family and now her love for new hope, she is a survivor in more ways than you can imagine. 
These are characteristics that I would do well to emulate. Her calm spirit is a delight to be around. Never does she bring confusion, selfishness, or conflict to any event that she takes part in. She is a welcoming and friendly person to all, no matter who you are, and her joy is so big that it is contagious. She has been married to her life partner for almost four decades, and we hope that God bless her with four more with him. It is our pleasure to honor one of New Hope's special women of worship, one of God's special daughters. Come on down, Sister Donna Clark. lady being honored today is such a blessing to her family and has become a blessing to me since I've met her not too long ago. She's a, a blessing to her community and new hope. She has experienced many trials and tribulation, but her faithfulness in her family and to God is unmatched. She leads with a heart and makes it a point to teach others to do the same. Rain or shine, she's dependable and ready to be used wherever she may be needed. She gives her life to acts of service, doing it with nothing but love. You can find her most of the time, uh, Sister Frances, in the kitchen, working with you. The Lord is good, and he remains good despite our trouble. She thanks God for each and everything because he has turned her tornadoes into blessings. She's a leader, standing with love and confidence in the Lord. She does everything with a smile and genuine happiness. New Hope, let us recognize this hidden treasure, a God mom and mother, daughter, and friend, none other than our own Sister Paula Harris. <laughs> This fourth gym, giving honor to God and to Dr. Michael Andrew Owens, pulpit guests, and to my brothers and sisters in Christ. Again, good morning. It is such a pleasure for me to introduce this hidden treasure. The Wild Committee looked around to search a hidden figure and discover someone who has been in plain sight for over 40 years <laughs> as a member of New Hope Missionary Baptist Church. She sang in the inspirational choir the Celestial Choir, was a member of the praise team, and, and was a member of the junior nursing unit, and continues to lift her voice to the glory of God and as a soloist. She attended San Bernardino Valley College, Riverside Community College, in pursuit of a career in nursing. Her career led her to work at both Community Hospital and Penn State Hospital, where she eventually retired after 34 years of service. She did this while providing care for her mother and raising a bonus daughter and granddaughter. No, she wasn't wearing a cape, nor was she born with a silver spoon in her mouth. 
but her heart had unconditional love for family and friends, always singing, if I can help somebody, my living will not be in vain. <laughs> who, by now, you may have guessed who this hidden figure is. And today, we honor you for your unselfishness and faith. Miss Eugenia and Bennett, come on down. <laughs> Wow, very well deserving. Congratulations, <laughs> Sister Sharp, Sister Bennett, Sister Thrash, Sister Harris. All well deserved. You're no longer hidden figures anymore. <laughs> We've called your name. God always knew your name. And we thank you for your work at New Hope. And you are so deserving of the honor. Give them another hand. <laughs> So we have a very important program insert. It's prayer time. And so we will have our prayer led by Sister Janice Robinson. If she can come at this time. And um, I'm gonna take a point of privilege since I have the mic. And there are so many members on our prayer list, but keep Joshua Jackson, my nephew, of course, Rhonda's son, in your hearts and prayers. At 27 years old, we have a life-changing situation. And I think Brother Thrash said it in his review that things change so quickly. And so that's always why we stay close to our God and lean on him in all times. Sister Robinson. As you come to the altar, we have so much in our world today that is going on that we need to be in special prayer concerning. Sometimes we think, dear Lord, what is happening? And those of us that love you, Lord, what is your plan? But as you come, I ask that you free your minds of the worries and the things that you're bringing to the altar, that you will leave them here and not take them away worried anymore. As a testimony, I have driven for over 60 years, and on Thursday, I had a car accident, the first one, and I was, of course, upset, didn't get angry, but a calming spirit came in the car and told me that no matter what, everything was going to be okay, and it was my fault. Thank God for full insurance. But as we come to the altar, let us again send our petitions up to the Lord. Most gracious and most loving Heavenly Father, we come to you this morning, Lord, and we just want to say thank you. 
thank you, Lord, for allowing us to once again walk through these doors. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for the fellowship. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for the love that was shown by others. We ask, Lord, that you will continue to strengthen us day by day, Lord, as we attempt to do your will. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for endurance. We thank you for patience. We thank you for your healing. We thank you, Lord, for your grace, and most of all, Lord, for your mercy. And then, Heavenly Father, we ask if you would please, Lord, forgive us for our sins, Heavenly Father. Because, Lord, no matter how hard we try not to, there's always something that comes up, Heavenly Father. And we just ask if you would please forgive us. Lord, we ask that you would walk through this prayer list. There are many, many names there. There are many reasons we don't know what they are, Heavenly Father, but we know you do. And we ask, Heavenly Father, that you answer the prayers according to your will. Be it a prayer for physical health, be it a prayer for mental health, be it a prayer, Heavenly Father, for a relationship, or Heavenly Father, be it a prayer for financial. We ask, Lord, that your will would be done, Lord, and that you will bless us. And then, Heavenly Father, as I close this prayer, I ask a special prayer for the leaders of this church. Heavenly Father, I ask that you will cover them, that you will take them to the heights that you want them to be in. That, Lord, you will crown their heads with knowledge and you will give them the wisdom that is needed to lead your people. Because, Lord, we are sheep. We know that you have sent shepherds. We know, Lord, that you send your Holy Spirit. But we're asking now, Heavenly Father, that you will take the leadership in your arms, Heavenly Father, and that you will strengthen them, that you will love them, that you will lead them and guide them so that they can give us what is needed for the living of this world. Heavenly Father, look upon our civic leaders. Look upon those that set and make decisions according to your city, your state, and this country, Lord. And then, Heavenly Father, help us to continue to be prayerful people that we pray, Heavenly Father, and that after we pray, Lord, that we have a determination and a knowledge, Lord, and also an acceptance of your will. And then, Lord, as we go back to our seats, give us that joy and that peace that is needed, Heavenly Father. Bless the remainder of this service. Bless the speaker, Heavenly Father. Touch her heart, Heavenly Father, and touch her mind with your word, with your knowledge, and then touch our hearts and help cause our hearts to be receptive to this word. And then, Lord, let it grow us, and not only grow us, but let us be able to share it with others. And it is in the precious, the most precious name of Jesus that I send up these prayers. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Lord.
Yes, he'll be right on time. He's going to do it. He's going to do it. So now we move into a very important part of our service. We are getting ready to hear the word. But first, we'll have introduction of the speaker by Deaconess Julius McGee, followed by a selection from our choir before we hear from Elder Loria Willoughby. And I want to thank you for being um, your worship leader and for this opportunity on this 25th anniversary of Women's Day to serve as again your worship leader this has been a privilege and an honor and it has been filling for me so i hope for you it's been the same thank you give an honor to god give an honor to our pastor michael owens it's all oh there you go <laughs> um to all on the pulpit, our honored guests. Um, I'm here to introduce our speaker. Um, if you are a woman that attends Sister to Sister, you have already heard of her and heard her. And you know that when she has a word, she brings it. She told me today it was gonna be a teaching lesson, so y'all just sit back, because I'm about to learn something. Now. I am introducing my sister, my biological sister, my sister in Christ, my true friend, and yes, when I say a true friend, she is a person I can call in the midnight hour, and she will wake up and talk to me if I need it. And not only will she talk to me then, but she's going to follow up a couple of days, just make sure everything is okay, you know, because that's just how she is. Um, if you are looking for a friend and you need somebody to pray for you, she's a true prayer warrior. It's a blessing that has been bestowed on her that has just been amazing. It's amazing. This woman, I love her dearly. But I know that everyone that really comes into her contact or, or has contact with her will love her too. I am going to introduce to you Elder Loria Willoughby. She has been married to her faithful husband for 33 years. And oh, by the way, and again, if you've been to Sister Sister, you also know him because he comes every time. And he don't come and stay in the hotel room. He want to be right in the mix of what's going on. And I actually love that about him because I think that is great that he's there to uplift her even when we're saying it's just for women. He's like, no, the Lord's word is for everybody and I'm going. She also has a wonderful son. He is amazing. And um, as he grows, I, I have to tell you this, Young man is the person that encouraged me to move on. Because I, I, I was in my education or in my career field, I was like, okay, that's it. I'm just going to be a teacher. I'm not, that, that's it. All this other stuff is just too hard. I'm not doing it anymore. But that young man reminded me that the Lord says that change doesn't come unless you move. It's amazing. This is an amazing family. I love them. I love their power. I love their love for the Lord, all of them. Um, and so I, at this point, if you don't know her, you're going to get to know her. But those who do, just sit back and wait for the word. So I am introducing to you Elder Loria Willoughby. You will hear from her after the wild choir.
the happy times of praise his name. My worship is for real. My worship is for real. Is your worship for real? Is your worship for real? My worship. Hallelujah, somebody. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, somebody. Oh, you can do better than that. God's been so good. He's been good to you. Just look around. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Oh, God, I thank you this morning. See that right there? Your worship is for real? How many of you got that testimony? How many have you been through something? Come on now, somebody been through something. And God brought you out. You say, Sister Preacher, how you know God brought me out? You right here today. You right here to live and talk about it. And so we got to thank him for everything that he's done. Again, good morning. I'm just so excited. I was talking with your pastor this morning, and I told him, you better hold me down. I done been through some things to get to this place. And I tell you, God is real and living in my life. So I, first of all, I want to give an honor to God, who is the head of my life. I'd like to thank Pastor Michael. I'm sorry, Dr. Michael Owens. He's a pastor, but he's also a doctor, and we give him his accolades this morning. Amen? Y'all ought to stand up and give your pastor a hand praise. It's not an easy job. We thank God for him. Secondly, I want to thank the Women's Worship Committee. She know who she is. She walked me through this thing. Miss Forlow was good and on time. LeVette. And I want to thank the New Hope Missionary Baptist Church family for extending this invitation to me to be your speaker on today. For you that don't know me, I am Loria Willoughby, elder and minister from Cathedral of Praise International Ministry where my pastor is Bishop Craig Ward Johnson and his wife is the lovely Demetria Johnson. I would like to thank my husband. Can you stand please? So don't put your eye on that one. Stand up. That's my husband and my son. Now y'all can put your eye on that one because he looking, he looking. And I'd like to thank all of my family and friends who came out today. That's my sister in the back, y'all. Just, just, you know how I go. I would like to recognize my sister, Deaconess Julie McGee, and my brother-in-law, Deacon Jermaine McGee, who knew me when. And y'all gonna have to think about the when, because I'm not telling that part. But I want to thank them. And they're members here at New Hope, and they love their church. You should always have laughter in the house of the Lord. That lets me know that you have some joy about you. So I'm glad when I hear you laugh and chuckle, okay? Let us pray and then I'm gonna get into the word. Father God, we just thank you. 
We thank you for the opportunity just to be in the house again, God, one more time. Lord, I thank you that you allow me to stand before your people. Allow the anointing to fall fresh this morning to the hearer and the speaker. God, that whatever is said today will resonate in their spirit, God. They'll go back and meditate it on a day and night, God. And God, I thank you that somebody's being healed right now. I thank you that somebody's being delivered. I thank you that somebody is truly understanding who you are. And God, as I go before you, I ask that you hide me behind the cross, oh God. Let the Holy Spirit come from within. Whatever you tell me to say, I'll say. Whatever you ask me to do, I'll do. And so, Father, I thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. So I'm just a talking preacher. So don't be expecting all this hollering and all that good stuff. I'll do that if God tells me to. But normally, I like to talk plain speaking. God said in his word, he wants us to say it so that even a child can understand it. So today, you about to be children. So normally, I give scripture before I start the sermon. And I will today a little bit later. So for all of y'all that's waiting for me to drop the scripture right now, hold on. However, things are going to be a little unusual today. Can you look at your neighbor and say, unusual? unusual. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. I'm on assignment. Because growing in Christ is essential to the believer. Our theme today is women of worship growing to be more like Christ. Now, I'm going to start off with a little testimony. But when I came to this morning, I heard a testimony. So I'm going to tell you my testimony. But this young lady was telling me that she had had a heart attack. I won't ask her to stand up, but I want you to know she isn't here in the house of the Lord. And it was just a short while ago that she had the heart attack. Now I want you to keep that in mind as we go forward. Young one, one young woman stood about down here, and she said her son was going through something a year ago. Okay, I want you to keep these things in mind as we go forth. The young man that came down, and he was talking in Sunday school, he was talking about how to encourage you. So God told me that I'm an encouraging preacher. I'm not here to beat you over the head. I'm here to give you the word and what thus say the Lord and pray that you follow his instructions, okay? So my testimony, in 2019, I had a stroke. I lost the sight in my right eye. It was completely closed. And for three days, I was in the hospital. And I laid on that hospital bed and I said, God, what happened? Anytime something goes on in my life, the Lord warns me. Okay? But I didn't, I didn't feel like I had a warning. So as I lay there and I was crying and carrying on, the Lord said, dry it up. He said, I told you six months ago to slow down. I said, God, I did slow down. He said, no, what you did was you drop something and then you pick something else up. Mm -hmm. All right. He said, I told you to slow down, Lord, but you didn't listen. I said, well, I know God, but, you know, I, I got my church work. I got my family life. I got my school. I got my work. I got my community, God. I need to be working. He said, uh-huh, yeah. That's why you laying in this bed. So I said, God. And y'all know how we get when we stressed out and now we done done all the wrong and we going to God because we're in a crisis. Don't act like you don't know because you've been there. And I said, God, if you just heal me. He said, Lori, I'm going to heal you. 
I said, Lord, I mean, I need my eyes. I read the word, I preach the gospel, I do this and that, and I had a whole list of stuff that I do. And the Lord said, I am going to heal you. So I was happy with that. That second day I woke up, there was a nurse in my room, and she said, honey, you haven't asked for anything to eat. I said, I'm not hungry, I, I really don't eat hospital food, I like real food. I, this ain't gonna work out for me, cause y'all food ain't seasoned, and y'all won't let my husband bring me no sandwich. <laughs> so she said, well, I can get you a sandwich. I said, well, yeah, that sounds safe. Go ahead and give me a sandwich, but I don't want nothing else you got. So she got me a little sandwich, and I was talking to her. And she was telling me about her life. And her child was autistic, and she was having some problems. Well, I work with kids who have uh, different disabilities, and that's one of the disabilities that I work with. And so I began to minister to her on my sick bed. And I told her, God will work it out for your good. I gave her some information on what she could do within the school system, and then I began to pray for her. So after I finished praying, she said, you said you're not supposed to be praying for me. I said, oh, I don't care where I am. If I ain't dead, I'm going to do the will of my father. So later that day, I got a different nurse, and she came in, and we were talking. Now, don't ask me why these folks talk to me and tell me all their business. And she told me, she said, I'm looking for a home. Me and my husband been renting for blah, blah amount of years. And I said, did you see something you like? She said, yes. I said, well, let's pray about it. And she looked at me, and she said, but you don't know what faith I am. I said, I don't care about what faith you are. I said, the true and living God answers my prayer on your behalf. So I don't care what your religion is. I just care that you know the Father. So we prayed. She left. She was crying. She said, you know, you better stop praying for people because you sick. <laughs> I said, I'm feeling better already. So I asked the nurse, when am I going home? I'm ready to go home. She said, well, you can't go till the doctor come in. The doctor comes in, and he looks at me. He, gave, he said, is your name so-and-so? I said, yes. He said, well, I had to come see the woman. They had a stroke two weeks ago, and it's just now ending up in the ER. I said, what you mean I had the stroke two weeks ago? He said, you remember when you talked about having that headache and you had been swimming up with your sister, Julie? <laughs> I said, yes. He said, that's actually when you had the stroke. It was not a sunstroke. It was a stroke. Now, y'all, you just don't know how I felt at that moment. Two weeks, my God, let me stay on this earth when I had a stroke, I didn't have any medicine. I didn't have nothing. God is a keeper. He kept me in my right mind. He kept me so that when I had the stroke, I was still walking. I was still talking. I still had the use of my limbs for two weeks. Now, you let me tell you about the power of the living God. Who is God in your life? I want you to think about that. Is he a healer? Is he a, may, a way maker? Is he a deliverer? Is he your financial consultant? Who is he in your life? And I want you to think about it. Because as we go forward, I'm going to have a few more questions for you. Today is an opportunity to worship him for who he is, not for just what he does. You would have never made it without him. The truth is, it is because of him you're still pressing forward. Hallelujah, somebody. Lift your hands and give him a wave offering. 
If he's done anything for you, all to see your hands up. Thank you, Lord Jesus. The title of my message, It's All About You. I know you expected something just a little bit more drastic. But I'm going to tell you why. It's all about you. The scripture I will be coming from is Psalms 100, verses 2 to 5. If you would please stand with me and turn to Psalms 100, 2 through 5. And if you have it, say amen. And if not, say wait a minute. Yeah, I got that because, you know, I got to put on my glasses and all that good stuff, too. So I'm going to wait a minute. And sometimes we got to get our cell phones out because we didn't bring no Bible. So it's going to take us a little minute to get to it on the cell phone. So I thank you for standing as we read the word. Now, I have the New Living Translation. If you don't have that, don't read too loud. But I want you to read it for yourself. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him singing with joy. Acknowledge that the Lord is God. He made us and we are his. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving. Go into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. For the Lord is good. His unfailing love continues forever. And his faithfulness continues to each generation. Amen. Amen. The word of the Lord is already blessed. You may be seated. Now, I'm not going to stay too long because uh, as I had this discussion with Pastor uh, Dr. Michael Owens, um, my pastor always told me, when you go, they give you an hour, you take 45 minutes. Don't be up there all day. It don't take that long. So I'm going to do what God said, then I'm going to sit down. Now, often worship and praise are used interchangeably. However, they are not the same. You may ask what the difference is. Worship is any and every expression of obedience, adoration, honor, and gratitude offered to the true God by a born-again soul who knows the truth about God and loves him. Praise is to create an intimate space between you and the Lord, allowing him to speak directly to your heart in such a way you are drawn nearer to him. Yes, we do them together, praise and worship, and that's okay. But you really got to know how to worship God. And I know this is going to surprise some of y'all. There's more than one way to worship. And I'm going to break that down for you. So we worship God because we desire to focus our attention on God. It's primarily a, a heart issue. It's a heart issue when you worship. You don't worship from your mind. You don't worship from your thought. You worship because there's something on the inside of your heart that unctions you to worship the almighty God. We worship God within our heart, sincere and motivated by our love for God and gratitude for all he has done. Um, I just want you to remember what Jesus did at the cross, dying for the sins of the world and giving us an opportunity at eternal life. My goodness. That alone is enough. But it's just so much more than that. When I think about his loving kindness and his tender mercies, I could just shout on that alone. Our God just holds us in his arms and loves on us. The beauty of God and all his majesty truly is the greatest thing in a believer's life. Just look back over your own life and see what God has done for you. I want you to look back. I'm not going forward till you look back. Some of us have been in marriages that didn't work out, look back. Some of us had children that cut up, look back. 
I'm going to bring it just a little bit closer. Some of us was on our way to church and people was running behind and we were getting a little angsty. And so we had to ask the Holy Ghost to take control before we lose our mind because they wasn't in the car. That was just this morning. Uh-huh. I know I'm a mother and I remember those days. Uh, get ready. Come on. Time to go. I'm hungry. I got one shoe. I, oh, Lord. And by the time you get to church, you're frustrated because you done been fussing and arguing and carrying on. Women, we know it's true. Now, when I look back over my own life and think about what, what God has done, I shout hallelujah because I've been through some things, people of God, and I'm sure you have. Worship, it creates a relationship between you and the Father. When we worship, it teaches us to submit and surrender all our cares to God, our priorities, our plans, hopes, and dreams, and even our fears. Now, I know I'm talking to somebody. Every day is not a good day. You have something going on, you're fearful sometimes. Okay, these things are human nature. They're nothing to be ashamed of. But the fact that you take it to the Father is where you need to celebrate. Okay? Lord, Worship is declaring that God is in control of your life. Doesn't it feel good to cast all your cares on him because he cares for you? That's scripture. He said cast every care, everything you're thinking about, everything you're hurting behind, cast it on him. And he said he'll take care of you. Remember, no one can worship for you because this worship is all about you. And it's between you and God the Father. When we lift our hands in total surrender, I'm going to show you all how we, we do it. Okay. This is total surrender. We are saying, do what you will with me. Let your will be done. How about we practice that? Do what you will with me. Let your will be done in my life. As believers, we lay down our pride and arrogance and confess all of our needs. Jesus is always available to us. Jesus, know your needs. The needs people have are not always the needs they feel. And what Jesus offers is not a feeling of satisfaction for a felt need, but genuine satisfaction for a real need. Spending time in worship will bring more understanding. Sometimes we go to the Father one way because we have a situation. But thank God and praise be to him that he knows your insides and out. He knows how to answer you. Because just because something is on the surface does not mean that's the thing that's plaguing you. Yeah, nope. If you can see it with your own physical eyes, uh, drop it. It's what's in here. So somebody's child called them and the child is upset and frustrated what's going on right now. But you know that that thing's been going on for a while. You just haven't said nothing. Same thing with marriages. We love our spouses. And uh, I love my husband. I love him more today than I did when I got married. But though there are some days when we riding in the car that he might say a little something, and I'm thinking, I'm going to hit you in the head. And it's nothing but the Holy Ghost that say that's what you're not going to do. So, so this surface stuff, it sounds good. 
and it looks good. Some of us dealing with finances, and we've been trying for a while to get it right, all right? But maybe it's not as right as you like it to be. So you take it to the Lord. But the Lord says, remember when I told you to start that 401k? Remember when I told you to become a tither? Oh, yeah, I'm about to hit it. Remember when I told you to bless the man or woman of God and you didn't do those things? That's not saying I'm not going to give it to you. But I'm really assessing your need, not your right now, surface need. Okay? As believers, we need to know who to worship. Who do you worship? Now, don't get it twisted. We were all young once, and we all did things that maybe we shouldn't have done. We didn't always have the best day or the greatest day, or for some of us, the greatest life. But when you put things before Christ, that's a problem. Yeah, I know you like the football game. It's the end. There's nothing wrong with it. However, talk to the Lord first before you decide you're going to miss church. Uh-huh. Yeah, okay. Y'all ain't liking me right now, but uh, the truth is the truth anyhow. Uh, some of us have other things that we like to do and then come back to Christ after we've done it. Christ needs to be first. How many know that I'm right about it? Now, worship begins with you, and it is a heart condition. What is your priority? Who is God in your life? Is he first? Is he second? Or he, is he the one you call after you done talked to all of your family and friends? Huh? And, and you might not have got the answer you wanted, so you kept on calling, and you kept on asking your friends and whatnot, and then... You decided, well, can't nobody help me like Jesus. Okay, Jesus should have been your first thought. This is just a reminder, I ain't coming against nobody. He should always be your first thought. Where is he in your everyday order of life? How many of you get up in the morning and pray? Thank God for you. When we know how to worship, the where of worship is no longer important. The where can be done at any time and any place because the who Jesus is means that worship must be done in spirit and truth, which we find in the scripture. Sometimes I like to show people the scripture so they don't say, well, she said, no, this is the word. John 4, 23 and 24 says, but the time is coming, indeed it's here now. When true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. The Father is looking for those who will worship him that way. For God is spirit. So those who worship him must worship in spirit and in truth. Jesus makes his need obvious for worshipers when he requests that true believers worship him. Now... I'm going to say something, and this is a self-examination. Remember, I'm on assignment, and so I have to put a disclaimer out here so y'all don't be texting the pastor and Julie and all of them. Don't, don't bother. Mm -mm -mm. This is for you. Again, it's all about you and your personal worship with Christ Jesus. Many of us have been in crisis situation where we have been or heard about a tragedy or we have seen some things or something has happened in our own personal life. And unfortunately for us, that's the time we go to crying, I'm guilty, and we go to whining, I'm guilty, um, and we do every manner of thing but begin to get in worship. When you come to those places in your life, 
You need to throw up your hands and begin to worship God. He'll give you an understanding of the situation. He'll tell you exactly what you need to do. But first, you got to go to him. As women of God, we live by example. We are mature and vibrant in our relationship with God. We love the Lord, and in all our ways, we continue to seek his presence. Therefore, worshiping and praising God becomes our lifestyle. If worshiping worshiping God is not your lifestyle, you got to make some changes. What we deal with, I don't care how bad it is. God got to answer. I'm telling you what I know. See, you thinking what you see now is what has always been. Uh Uh-uh. I'm honest, and I'm transparent. I wasn't always saved and Holy Ghost filled. Now I always knew God because my dad was a pastor, and I always believed God. But, you know, when you're young, you say, God going to give me time. Some of us are running out of time. So if you're running out of time, your closest friend should be Jesus. You cannot get the time back. Some of us just accepted Christ at 40. Some at 50. Imagine what would have happened if we accepted God in our 20s. Where would we be now? So I'm just trying to help somebody now. So don't be going at your pastor talking about that lady. Uh-uh. <laughs> the Lord loves us with an unfailing love. The Lord's faithfulness endures forever. When we grow in worship, it is a daily effort. That means you have to pray. I'm going to bring up some other things you can do to get there. But that's one thing that you need to be doing is praying because God hears you. The believer's worship is flavored by the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ. The reminder of what God has done through Christ, whether singing songs, offering prayers, listening to the preached word, or coming to the Lord's table, we do so as grateful response to the love and faithfulness of God through Christ. As people of God, we need a reminder of who and why we worship. Singing songs will remind us of his great love toward us and the faithfulness of the Lord endures forever. Singing will bring you into a posture to worship. Remember that old devotional, devotional song? I know you heard it since you're in the Baptist church. I need thee, oh, I need thee. Every hour, I need thee. I still sing that song. Because I remember back in the day, devotion, back in the day, included a song, a prayer, and a scripture reading. This was to get you into a posture of worship. And for many of you saying, well, what's the posture? It's a position. It's to get you in a place of worship. Uh, I could come in here and play all day long. And, okay, I don't, let me show, it how, how, show you how it goes. God, if you just help me this one more time. Lord, I'm going to do the best I can. But I want you to know I ain't perfect, God. Now I'll go back out and do the same thing I've been doing. Okay? Okay, here I come again. Lord, I know last time I told you that I was going to do better. And I was okay for a while. But then I, you know. Give me one more chance, just one more chance. See, every time we ask him for one more chance, I'm going to tell you something. You're nailing your Jesus to the cross one more time. 
Think about it. He did everything and went to the cross and took on your sins and gave you an opportunity for eternal life. And you talking about one more time. Huh? You got to think about the people of God. None of us are perfect, and we all fall short. So I'm not telling you to get perfect, because you can't do that until you're in Christ Jesus. Okay? But what I am saying is make a conscious effort to stay on the straight and narrow. Stay with God's word. If you don't have it, ask for wisdom. If you want him to help you, let him guide you and show you. Okay? I'm going to talk about my favorite thing, and Julie told you about it. I love to pray. Don't ask me. I just know the Holy Spirit within me. I love to pray for folks. I just love to pray. It's my lifestyle. So when you worship through prayer, whether you're alone or with others, it's always a right response to who you are and what you have done. Amen? But God's grace is sufficient. Because God has been so good to us. When I talk about prayer, I talk like this. Prayer is real. It can change your situation and your circumstance in a bat of an eye. In a snap of a finger. Go down before him. Pray his word. See, God said when you pray his word, it will never return to him void. So when you got a situation, you get in your word and find out the word for your right now life and your right now situation. Stop this foolishness and looking at the TV and getting caught up what you see and hear with your physical eyes and physical ears. God has more power than that. Now the enemy will bring it to you just to get you stressed out. How many of you are leading a stressful life? You know why I'm talking about it? Because I did it. Until I came into the knowledge of Jesus Christ and he reminded me that you don't have to do that. If you know me, you can come to me. Preaching. See, I told you about the singing. I'm to I told you about the praying. Now I'm talking about the preaching. It's a vital part of worship. Because only in the preaching of God's word do we hear from God. Preaching is a means of grace in the sense that God uses the preaching of his word to nourish the believer. How many need to be nourished in here? How many of you think you were island all by yourself? How many? That you could do it all? You cannot. Now, I see some nodding heads, and that's all right. Because my son told me one time, when people sleep in church, the anointing is still going to fall on them. <laughs> hey, I ain't mad. As long as God is working and you nod your head, I'm all right with it. <laughs> now, every time we partake of communion, we are, com we are proclaiming, preaching, that Christ died for our sins. Communion is a sacred time of fellowship with God where believers remember Jesus' sacrifice on the cross. This is a unique time of worship. Make it your business. Make it your business to take communion on a regular basis. Communion will heal your body. Communion will deliver your soul. Communion will set everything that's out of order in order. Take communion. It is critical for the believer. Again, it's all about you. Nobody can make you do these things. Well, sister preacher, why should I worship? I'm glad you asked. Can I tell you several of the benefits you receive when you worship? The believer's goal is to glorify God, and in doing so, 
Listen to what he'll give you. Guidance in your everyday life. How many need guidance? You don't always make the right decisions. Protection over your life. I got a person back here who said she had an accident and she yet alive. I have a person back here who talked about a heart attack. She's yet standing. Some of you have been sick and God has spared your life because God has purpose for your life. I want you to know when I say God has purpose for your life, you might not be up here in the pulpit, but God wants you to minister to somebody about something. There's something about you. I know you heard that before. Girl, something about you. Oh, sir, it's something about you. Yeah, the something about you is ministry. Do what God called you to do and be about your father's business. Love in your heart. How many, how many believe in love? Raise your hand. See, some of y'all don't raise your hand because, one, you haven't been in love, or two, you don't really know that much about it, or three, it didn't work out. But the love in your heart for God grows every day. You see these women of worship? I hope you think they were always this way. That's a nice thought. But these women of worship grew to be women of worship. Amen? Can we give them a hand? And there's some women out there and men out there who grew in Christ. He'll give you the power of the Holy Spirit. How many... Believe in the Holy Spirit. He's a comforter. Come on. He's everything that you need him to be. He's a comforter. He helps you at every turn. Now here's one. And don't get mad at me. Forgiveness. He'll give you a heart of forgiveness. How many can't forgive their neighbor? How many can't forgive the person sitting right next to you? You don't even talk to them no more. Because in your heart, you have art with them. This is a benefit of worshiping. It's forgiveness. So you won't walk around angry, mad, upset, frustrated. You've been there. You know what it's like. You don't want to live that life when you're living a life for God. Get that off of you. And lastly, he gives us the benefit of his glory. Hallelujah. Because I'm looking at an audience that is truly blessed. I'm looking at the anointing resting on folks in here that are outshining the lights. I am telling you, God will do it. Now, y'all thought I was going to be all day. I'm almost finished. Because, you know, I, I don't know about y'all, but I'm one of those people that heat don't work well with me. So, worship is something that we experience in our very soul. Worship begins with God, his love and his faithfulness. I want you to turn to somebody. You know, since COVID, we careful. Um, and, you know, we don't like no touching and all that. I, I can understand it. But I want you to turn to somebody and say, when was the last time you worshipped him? When was the last time you brought up both your hands and said, I surrender? When, when was the last time? Come on now. When was the last time you positioned yourself and lay out before him? I came today to talk about worship, but most of all, I came to let you know your father in heaven is waiting on you to just worship him. So I thank you for having me 
and I pray that my assignment has been accomplished. God bless, and you have a beautiful, peaceful Sunday. Amen. Praise the Lord. Did you enjoy the word? Wow. Wow. Women of worship, may I have you, st all, everyone stand in the sanctuary with that opening of a reflection of why do you praise and worship the Lord? Now is the time. I'm going to have my deacons come forth. We're going to open up the doors of the church. Wow. We're celebrating you women this morning. We're celebrating you. But men, our kings, you're here this morning as well. And we know that the gates of heaven is open for, for all of us, amen? So now is the time. If, if you've decided to make Jesus your choice, it's now it's time to come forward. Anyone come forward? Our scripture again as a reminder in Colossians 3, 23 to 24 says, And whatsoever ye do, do it heartily as the Lord and not unto men. So when you are dedicating yourself to the Lord and receiving the Lord as your Lord and personal Savior, you're not worried about man. It's just you and the Lord. Knowing that of the Lord, ye shall receive the reward of the inheritance. For ye serve the Lord Christ. How many of you want to receive the inheritance reward from Jesus Christ? How many of you want Jesus to say, well done? How many? Because now is the time. Now is the time that you have to make your decision. And I'm going to say this as we continue in you, as you're deciding. I know Jesus said, if I came down, Reverend Bronick, and bust down and came and opened up the, the, the heavens right now when I was young. This is what he said to me when I was young. He said, if I, if I busted open the heavens right now and came down, what would you do? I, when I was young, I was like, I don't know, Lord. I, I take off running. He said, uh, well, wrong. If you're my child, I want you to run my way. You should be excited, excited that I'm coming. And if you don't know right now, if you want to run the opposite way, then now you need to come and develop a relationship with the Lord. Because he is coming for his second coming. So now is the time. Now is the time that Jesus wants all of us to make a decision to choose him. Amen. Bow heads, no, bow heads. I'm a close in the word of prayer. Bow heads. Slow. Father in heaven, we thank you, Father God, for allowing us to have the opportunity to open up the gates of heaven for us to reach out to you, Father, and say, please save me. I choose this day, Father God, for my house to serve you. So, Lord, I just ask you, Father God, to bless each and every head that is represented here today. I ask you, Father, to touch their mind and touch their heart. Lord, and if there's any sickness within any one of us, Lord, I ask you to remove it right now. Lord, and if we have some undecided minds, Lord, I ask you to bless their minds right now. I ask you to come and sup with them. Let them know that you will never leave nor forsake them, but they have to make you 
their choice. But Lord, bless each and every one of us. Give us traveling mercy and grace through our day. Thank you for allowing us to have breath to be able to praise and worship you and continue to worship you. Collectively, we as a church body say amen and thank God. Hallelujah. Now you may be seated. Amen. church. Good morning, church. First, giving honor to God, our pastor, Dr. Michael Owens, all the ministers in the pulpit this morning, you, the women of worship, all you here gathered together today. Good morning. Did you guys have a great time? Yes. You know, um, it's an honor to be able to serve God in this capacity. But I tell you, every time I get up here to speak, although I don't have a problem with speaking, I get so nervous. So spare, be with me, <laughs> work with me this morning. But don't these ladies look awesome? <laughs> 25 years ago we wore purple and then we brought it back again even more powerful than before. And I tell you, you guys look beautiful. I even went to extra limb. I don't know if y'all can see it good, but I, you know, I'm kind of adventurous with my hair, so my hair is purple. So I had to make sure it come full circle today for the program. Um, but I want to also recognize my committee. So if they could please stand, some of them are away right now. But if you're there in the choir or here or in the congregation, please stand. You know. Things always have a way of working out, especially when God is in the middle of it. And you know, whenever you have a committee and different things and feedback from folks all around you, sometimes things get a little crazy. I will say, I have an awesome committee. When I tell you we work together, we pray together, and we pull it all together, it always comes full circle to honor God. And, and I tell you, it, it, the, leading up to this week, I was a, extremely stressed, but God has worked it out, and this service was magnificent for me. My soul has been blessed. The choir, I tried to come and sing this past week, and I hadn't really been in the choir since the Inspirational Choir, and, and, and I tried. I got up here, and it sounded okay, and I said, okay, well, it's not for you no more, LeVette. Those leads you used to do in the Inspirational Choir, you can't do that no more, but the choir was blessing and it was awesome. I want to thank everyone who participated. 
um, in the service today. Sister um, Rhea, Jesus, we just, we're going to go with that. Uh, Sister Rhea um, always comes through, and like she said, she's had some storms um, with her and within her family, but God has made a way for her to still be here and give him praise. So I thank you, I thank you, I thank you, I thank you. Uh, Sister Veronica, thank you. Oh my God, the, the youth, I tell you, whenever they come out and they do their prayer dance, my soul is so filled. I just, I told her already, um, next time we're gonna do two songs. One song is just not enough, I need two. So thank you again, thank you to the youth they come out and do their praise dance. I really appreciate it. Um, oh. <laughs> Rhonda MacGyver Jackson. Wow. That's what I say. Wow. Women of worship. Give him praise. The choir, again, you guys were awesome. Uh, Sister Gill, thank you. Um, Sister Tammy, thank you. The choir, again, thank you. I appreciate it. Um, now for our guest speaker. Wow, didn't she put that on? It is all about women of worship growing to be more like Christ guys a little bit and then I'm gonna go ahead and sit down because I think I've talked already to you. Um, <clears throat> she has charged us to realize the importance and the benefits of worship. Jesus protected women, empowered women, honored women publicly, released the voice of women, confided in women. <clears throat> Lord have mercy. Uh, was funded by women celebrated women by name, learned from women, respected women, and spoke of women as examples to follow. And as my sister clearly stated, it is our turn. Women, we have to stand up. We have to give God praise, or we gotta worship him at all times, even in the midst of our storms. And we know we all have had troubles and storms and things that we've had to deal with, but we know that God will always bring us through. As long as we commit, Give him praise, give him glory. He will give us guidance. He will give us protection. He will give us healing. The fact that I am a woman does not make me a different kind of Christian. The fact that I am a Christian makes me a different kind of woman. That being said, I thank you guys. Again, I do hope you guys had a blessed service today. We do have some tokens of love to give out to Sister Gill, Sister Rhonda, and as well as to our guest speaker. So if my guest chair will come up so we can go ahead and Sister Willoughby, if you would come up, please. <laughs> I just wanna thank you. My heart is full because my God is good. I never thought the day would come where I would stand before the people of God and preach the good news of the gospel. But God has allowed me to do that, and I'm truly grateful. I'm grateful for these women of God, women of worship, who've allowed me to come and stand before your church. Thank you, Pastor Dr. Owens. and Sister Gill and Rhonda. Pastor, it's all on you. Woo-wee! <laughs> <laughs> hey, 
thank God all right. Glory be to his name and praises belong to our God for how good he has been to us. I tell you, I was excited about getting to church today because I know when our ladies make up their mind to do anything, that it's going to be wonderful. And the word says, whatever you do, do heartily as unto the Lord. We've had an enjoyable time just watching them work, watching them prepare, and to come to this day of uh, full fruition uh, has been a blessing in the worship and in the word, and we give God thanks and praise for that. Amen. I want to give a shout out to the chair lady, Sister Levine, and her co-chair, Sister Cheryl, for the committee working together as they did. Amen. They had that little painting party going on. They didn't invite me to that, but I heard it was wonderful. It was <laughs> Amen. They told me what the colors was. I tried to get with the program. Uh, purple suits in the cleaners, but I did the best I could. Amen. Let's go shout out for the pastor. That's what <laughs> <laughs> Amen. But God's garden never looked more beautiful than it looked today. And we always look our very best when we're giving glory to God. I want to praise God for Elder Willoughby and the time that we were able to share before she came out here. I could just feel the spirit working in her soul, working in her spirit. And I knew that she was going to come forth with something that we could take and be a blessing to us as we go on our way. Uh, I want to thank God for Rhonda this morning because she's been on mom duty. Amen. She's been on mom duty all week in the midst of a crisis. We would have understood if she didn't make it back, but she does all things passionately. And so uh, her being passionate about New Hope, we knew she would be here. But God bless her because I know she got to go back. I just know she got to go back and may God keep her in doing so. Now there's a whole lot of won't he do it testimonies up in here. Yeah. But I want, I want Sister Julius McGee to stand up. That's a won't he do it testimony right there. And uh, most of you know what she has been going through and what she has been through for her to be here uh, for such a day as this is a testament that God will do it such as you need it. He'll do it for others. What is that? He'll do it for? Amen. Amen. God bless you. Thank you for this choir. I tell you what, we need to work out a tour schedule and get this choir on the road with some word. <laughs> Amen. Because they're inspiring me to preach. And if it wasn't, you know, if it wasn't so late, I could work up on one right now. But I... <laughs> I need to roll out of here and get on the radio and holler. And we thank God for Jesus. Thank God for you. And thank God for these wonderful women of worship. All right. Now, uh, there's a time-sensitive issue uh, before the residents of the Rialto community. We have any number of Rialto residents that are members of our church. And uh, I want to identify Sister Brenda Parker and our community liaison there, uh, Trustee Beverly Jones Wright. And uh, if you live in Rialto, then you know about the warehouse that they want to uh, build at the Pepper and uh, Pepper Avenue across from Frisbee Park. Now, if you want more information uh, so that you are astute, uh, educated, wise on the issue, she's going to be in the uh, conference room uh, with petitions that will allow you to weigh in on the issue so that it can be a part of the referendum on the ballot, and you can decide how you want things to be in your own community. The church say amen. amen. And part of our church tradition is to be involved in all things that are worthwhile in our community. So the both of them, along with Trustee Maurice Black, will be in the conference room after service, and uh, also there will be an opportunity in Frisbee Park tomorrow uh, to gain signatures to put the ballot uh, to put the referendum on the ballot. So we're not going to do the rally call speech here today, but if you want education on the issue, see these two persons. You want to make sure your voice is heard, then uh, sign the petition and uh, let the voices of the people decide what's going to happen in your community. The Lord be praised. Amen. I'm going to ask them to go on over now so that they can uh, receive you 
as you exit, you know where the conference room is. You've been here longer than me. Somebody say amen. And let us stand on our feet as we prepare to room. We ask that the Lord will bless what we have seen, what we've heard, what has stirred in our spirit as we receive both word and worship to the glory of our God. We ask that you would prepare your offering, your giving, as the Lord has blessed you with uh, material resources for your sustenance. Bless the church with the same, that we might continue excellence in the ministry to his name. O Lord our God, blessed be your name. Blessed be your spirit. Blessed be your people, Lord God, in the presence of the Lord. We ask, Heavenly Father, that you let this word be planted deep in our spirit. Nurture it, nourish it, Lord, so that when Monday morning comes, we can still draw from this fountain. We can still feast on this word of life. Bless your ministers, Lord God. Bless these musicians. Bless your songbirds. Bless these women, Lord God, the men and the families, Lord God, that we're all a part of. To the glory of your name, may we give our service. Bless our giving, Lord God, that little may become much in the master's hand. Have your way, work your work, and your will be done in Jesus' name. And all the people say it, amen. God bless you.